Hello, everyone, and welcome to Speak Up Says Talk Show. This is the place where authors, especially Christian authors, have an opportunity to share their testimonies through their written work in order to inspire you to open up your mouth and share your testimony as well. I'm your host, Angel Charmaine. I'm also CEO of Speak Up Says LLC, and I say welcome to you all tonight on this Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We meet here every single Wednesday with a new independent uh, or uh, indie, excuse me, independent or self-published author, because there's a slight difference in the two, but we welcome them. The Speak Up Says Bookshelf and Speak Up Says Talk Show platform were created and designed to support independent and self-published authors authors. It is very difficult to get our work out there and get it noticed so that people will read it and know that we've got good stuff. So this platform was created specifically with you in mind so that you can have more visibility as well as increased readers. So tonight I've got another beautiful author who's going to share with you. She's got a pretty dope book as well. And tonight we're going to be exposing it. So stick around to see exactly what that it is. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up for the night, author Ivy Caldwell. Welcome into the Speak Up Sis talk show spaces. How are you doing? Good evening, Angel. I am doing wonderful. Thank you for having me on tonight. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to come here and chop it up with me a bit. Um, your book is beautiful. First thing, the cover is beautiful. The that that uh, I don't know if it's a royal blue or if it's a magnetic blue, whatever it is, but it's beautiful. It's eye catching, and that gold in there is. It's also wonderful. So it's so a good looking cover. Thank you. Did you, um, and we'll, I, I'm going to ask, because you know what? Because I can, because it's my show. <laughs> <laughs> did you design it yourself or did you no, um, I did not. invest in that? No, I did not. I had a vision, uh, you know, with the flower on it. And when I sent it to the publisher and it came back and I was like, oh, it's beautiful. So, but I didn't do it. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, before we get started talking about Expose It tonight and getting to know you a bit more, if you will, please just share a little bit about who is Ivy Caldwell. Most definitely. I am a wife of uh, going on 27 years, uh, a mother of four young adult men, a grandmother of nine. I am an author of a life, certified life coach, uh, course creator. I'm also an ordained elder, and I'm in the process of uh, going through training to become a chaplain. So I have a lot going on in my life, and I love being busy. Wow. A chaplain, huh? Yes. That's pretty dope. Yes. So when you say chaplain, when I think, when I hear the word chaplain, I always think of military chaplain. But where exactly will you be chaplaining? <laughs> yes, yes. So there may be opportunities uh, in hospitals or let's say there is a disaster, mm -hmm. a chaplain. You can go on site when there's like a disaster area. Uh, you can go to police uh, when there's like a police, something's going on or the fire department. So you'll have authority to go around and pray and comfort people. OK, that's pretty cool. That's that's pretty dope. All right, then. So then I, we're going to jump right into this. And before we actually talk about expose it, I want to ask, based on what you just said, what even led you into writing a book? Well, I had no intentions of writing this book. <laughs> <laughs> So 2020, when the pandemic shut everything down, I was working from home. So I had this notebook where I had some children's stories. I had started it back in 2013. So I said, well, this is a perfect opportunity to pick my notebook, notebook back up. You know how we all say we're going to do something and we'll put it down and we get back to it. So I started writing uh, the children's stories. I've written them. I haven't published any of them yet. 
but that's my goal. But while in prayer one morning, the Holy Spirit said, you can't skip over this. So I was like, skip over what, Lord? Your story. So I had to sit there and think like my story is like, what is my story? So I said, yes, okay, I will tell my story. I will write my story so that my story can help someone. <sighs> so the the Lord leads you into this place of sharing your story and you end up titling that story, Expose It. And what's the subtitle? Share with the people the subtitle. Let your healing process begin. Mm. That's yes. a strong, that's a, when we expose is a strong, not, not share it, tell it, like think about it. <laughs> yeah. Expose is a really, really strong word. Yes, it is. Expose it. Bring it out in the open. Let the light shine on it. Speak about it. Talk about it so you can be healed because there are a lot of people Men, women, boys, and girls walking around where, who have experienced all different types of trauma, mm -hmm. but they have yet to open up their mouths and share it. But once you open up your mouth and start talking about it, mm -hmm. that's when your healing process can begin. Otherwise, it's just sitting there. It's, it's in your mind. Right. You know, it's eating at you, depending on what type of trauma it is. And that's how you get your authority and voice back by speaking about it. Right. Got you. That's what we're all about here with Speak Up says Revelations 12 and 11, right? We triumph him, him yeah. being the enemy, all yeah. of his tricks and schemes, guilt, shame, self-condemnation, low self-esteem, all of that, right? We yeah. triumph that via the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies. And we don't love our lives to the death. Amen. Amen. We don't take it to the grave. Yeah, right. The word of your testimony. That's right. Yes. Right. Yes. So we all for exposing, telling, sharing up in this place. I'm going to ask you, what is your story? What is my story? Mm -hmm. um, it was my ninth birthday. Um, you know, I woke up excited, wondering, you know, what type of uh, gifts I would get. Would I get a cake? Who was coming over to celebrate with me? And then I get this phone call. And on the other uh, end of the phone, the voice says, I have a surprise for you. So as the day goes on, uh, I make my way over to uh, my mother's boyfriend's house. I, I was alone. I, I remember going up the stairs because he lived on the upper level. And when I got into the apartment, I sat on the couch. And the next thing I know, he's there trying to unbutton my blouse. And I tried to push his hand away, but no matter what I did on that day, his mind was already set up to do what he had intended to do. So he lifted me up, put me on the bed. He molested me, uh, put me back on the couch, but I couldn't wait to get out of there that, that day. And he sent me on my way with a $1 bill and a box of crackers. That is my personal testimony. And in my book, I am sharing how we have to expose those things that we have experienced in life. And I'm giving you some tools and tips of how to expose them, how to be healed from them. And also forgiveness is a part of your healing journey. You know, a lot of people say, I can't forgive them. I can't forgive them. But you give that person control over you. Why do I say that? Because if you come into their presence, you tense up. Mm -hmm. You may make a dash for the door. You don't go around them. Right. Your whole demeanor changes. You've given them control over you. Mm -hmm. So you have to forgive them. And the forgiveness is for you. It's not for them. Mm -hmm. It's so that your spirit can be released and healed and be right. set free. That right. doesn't mean that you're giving them an out. They still did what they did to you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But you may never get a I'm sorry from them. And you have to be OK with that. But I forgive you. And then we also have to look at. Because there is a lot of cruel people in the world. You know, we see it, hear it all the time. What could have possibly happened to this person 
to make them turn out to be like this. We only internalize, you know, what they did to me. Yes, they were wrong. But what in the world happened in their lives to make them turn out like that? I think that's a question that a lot of people don't want to ask because when something happens to us or when someone does something to us, then it becomes about us, right? And honestly, I think most people say, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Right, right, right. They hurt me. They did this. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And that and that's just being honest. I think if if I'm honest and transparent about it, the vast majority of people who've been hurt, especially in this kind of way, Mm -hmm. don't want to hear about your trauma. And and we share, we share that piece of that type of trauma. I'm also a survivor of childhood sexual um, abuse. And I, like you, have been on a healing journey for a while. And I've gotten to a place where I have been able to forgive and to move on in order to be able to help other people to do the same. However, um, I can understand being in that place of going, I don't want to hear about what you're saying because I've been hurt and I don't hurt other people. Yeah, yeah. So that saying hurt people hurt people, Mm -hmm. I don't rock with that all the time because a lot of times hurt people try their best to not hurt other people. And because I've experienced that type of abuse, right, That, that type of trauma, I don't want anybody else mm. to to go through that. So I don't know about that hurt people, <laughs> hurt people, because for me, I'm like, dude, I don't want to hear about what your mom and daddy did to you. Right, right. Because right. you did this to me and I'm yeah. not doing this to other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me this. How do you, or in the book, do you approach this idea as you're exposing it because you talk about healing as well. Do you deal with forgiveness in the book? And if so, how do you um, address it? Yes, I do talk about forgiveness. There are different ways to approach forgiveness. Um, If you don't feel safe going around the person, you can take someone with you. The person could possibly be dead. You can write a letter to get your release. Just put it, you know, just write it all out in a letter. Um, I myself, um, because the perpetrator was my brother's uh, father and the perpetrator had passed away. So I went to the funeral to support my brother. You know, some people say, you know, I wouldn't have gone to that funeral, but I did. And I walked up to the casket and I looked at his face And I wondered, is he saved? So I know I have forgiven him. You know, someone else might have been said, I would have been trying to hit him or or curse him out, but the man is dead. (laughs) So I did forgive him. And I definitely talk about forgiveness in my book because that's important. And forgiveness is a process. It's a choice that we make. It's like you you make the choice, you intentionally make the choice to forgive, but the sting may still be there. It will take time for that sting of the offense to go away. And God plays a very important role in that part, you know, by going to God and just pouring your heart out to him. You know, God, you know, I don't want to feel like this. Can you please take this away from me? Right. Yep, so I can be healed and made whole. Yes. Wow. Well, tonight we have a guest or two in the building who's shown up. How you doing? Shantae Cuellar. She says, hello, ladies. Hello. She's also um, amening you tonight. <laughs> and, and what you are sharing uh, within this conversation. So did you expose 
it. And for, for this conversation, the it clearly is childhood sexual abuse. But for other people, it may be mental, uh, mm. mental health issues, right? It may be addictions, you know, it, it, it can be so that it can be so many things that it may be narcissism. Yeah. Right. Um, the, it may be domestic violence, the exposing it yeah. can be so many different things. So I, so anyone who's watching this tonight, or if you're watching this on the replay, just know your, it may not be what the, the specific it that we're referring to tonight. But the reality is, is that all of them need to be exposed. Yeah, they all yeah. need to be talked about. So, how long did it take you to actually open your mouth and share? Did you tell because you were young? Did you yes. go straight away and tell your parents? Yes. Um, actually, after it happened, I did not say one word, I did not speak of it again. And I hadn't seen this gentleman for quite some time. And I remember our house catching on fire, we had to move to the other side of town. Mm -hmm. And who shows up at our house? Mm. <laughs> he moves in with us. So time goes by, you know, he would walk around the house taunting me with this uh, evil looking grin on his face, pointing his finger at me saying, I'm going to get you. Wow. But he never did get me, but he definitely would taunt me. Mm -hmm. And one day my mom asked me, why don't you like him? Mm. So now I'm 10, I'm thinking, oh boy, this is my out. Mm -hmm. So I tell my mom exactly what happens to me. And she looks at me and she says, girl, ain't nothing happened to you. Must have been something you saw on TV. So that day shut my voice even more. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. I wasn't, although I know that happens i'm watching you i'm listening to you i'm paying attention to your demeanor and yeah. all of that i'm very observant and i just knew that you were going to say <laughs> i felt <laughs> it took my breath away just just now I, i'm being so oh. honest with you it took my breath just now because i was expecting the next thing to be yeah that she um, believed me and that she's helped you on the journey and, and possibly that's why you that helped you to get where you are today. Right. That's that's what I'm I wasn't ready for that. I was I just wasn't expecting that to be a part of your story. Yeah. How did you handle that as a little girl? Total opposite. So, you know, as he, he stayed with us and, you know, I stayed away from far from him as I could. Oh. Um, you know, I have fear, you know, the anger, the unforgiveness of my heart thinking this man is going to get me, right. you know, but he never did. It was just an awful situation. But as I got a little older, he went on to other females. Mm. Yeah. So were they younger or were they uh, his age? They definitely were not his age. He mm -hmm. was an old man. If you ask me, got you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I can remember my girlfriends coming over now, you know, 10, 11 years old, we would be in the basement playing. Here he comes. Mm -hmm. He's coming in the basement. Right. The feel on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But mom's not home because mom is working two jobs to take care of the family. Your brother, did you ever think, maybe I'll tell my brother that you all didn't have a relationship like that where you could tell big brother? I did not say anything to anyone. Anybody. I, just I guess if mom says no, then it, <laughs> it's sort of like if you go to the head. Right. And the head doesn't believe you or and I won't even say believe at this point. If the head just doesn't have the capacity to handle it, because can we can we can we go there for a second? Oh, well, definitely. You know, they, they could be in denial. <laughs> yes. They, 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 like you just said, they don't have the mental capacity to deal with it. So they push it aside, you know, like children stay in your place. Mm -hmm. What happens is this house, the family business, keep it to mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. But those family secrets lead to generational curses. Yes. And we have to start talking about this stuff and stop hiding it. Yes. It just keeps repeating itself. And that's not helping our families. Exactly. So 
you do address it. You finally speak up. You're finally going to expose it. You are shut down pretty much by the one person I'm sure if anybody's going to save you, mama's going to save you because that's what we tell our children. Right. Um, that doesn't happen. Yeah. What is life like for you after that? Did you become um, the promiscuous girl or did you become the yeah. ultra reserved girl? Like, don't touch me ever. Like, how did life play out for you after that? Yep. So I was very insecure. And of course, I did what teenagers do, looking for love in all the wrong places until I met a man, mm. J-E-S-U-S, <laughs> turned my life upside down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell it. Tell yes, it. Yes. So, you know, but so Jesus, you know, heart transformation, heal, deliver, set free. And I just thank God. Mm -hmm. But I will share, um, you know, I did go back to my mom. You know, because all through the years, I would tell people I was molested. I was molested, but I never went into details. Right. Until 2020. That's last year. Right. <laughs> I'm talking about like details of what actually happened. Wow. So, but I went to my mom. So the first time she didn't believe me. Mm -hmm. The second time I went to her, she's like, well, I did the best I could. See, I, was that's, that's, that's take care of, I was trying to take care of the kids. Mm -hmm. Time, I, I still didn't like that answer. So time went by. I went back to her again. I was like, Ma, you know, we got to talk about this. Mm -hmm. So this time I sat and I listened to her story. So after listening to her story, I was like, okay, I'm good. I got it. So mind you now, mom is not saved at the time that I tell her what happened to me. Not using that as an excuse because moms are supposed to protect their children. But after I listened to her story and where she was during that time, I understood why she said what she said. Nothing happened to you. Compared to what happened to her, mm. she has a powerful testimony. She wow. was raised on a plantation. Mm. So can you imagine what happens on a plantation? So what happened to you, relatively speaking, because, and oh, this is so good. I feel like I'm going to need more than 30 for this because in in my first book one of the one of the stories is entitled 2 a.m cry mm -hmm. and I share that feeling of being a successful woman who has been who is dealing with childhood sexual trauma and how that plays out in everyday life and what people don't understand is everything is relative De depending on how you see it how you process it and so for me it was like but i'm good like i'm living my life i'm doing well it's not i'm not crazy i'm not on drugs yeah. or whatever yeah. so my incident mm -hmm. maybe it wasn't it wasn't as bad as like yeah. this lady who done lost her mind or whatever so yeah. What I have to say, really, is it that bad or mm -hmm. should I even, is it even affecting my life? So when I think about your mother, it's like, that's what happened to you. You're going to be fine because yeah. inside yeah. she's thinking about what happened to her Yeah, and relatively speaking, and I need anyone who's listening to me, please hear me with your spiritual ears. Because some people who are sitting in a and still sitting in the trauma and still haven't really pro you might hear the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that Ivy's trauma was less. Right, right. I'm saying that a person who has experienced more experienced it on a more severe level, because there are levels to this thing. Yes, yes. May look at Ivy's trauma. And go, 
you know what, child, it ain't you're gonna be fine. Ain't nothing right. really happened to you because she's looking at herself like right, I'm right. still moving, I'm still living, I have children, I'm yeah. surviving, I'm taking care of, and look what happened to me. So, baby, you're gonna be all right. Ain't nothing right. really happened to you. Right, right, right. I can that is a conversation that definitely needs to be explored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everybody can't process what happens to them the same. Mm -hmm. You know, trauma is trauma. It doesn't matter what it is, it affects you. Yeah. Physically, mentally, emotionally, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a shock to your system. Yeah. And as a child, it's like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. What's happening to me? Then you don't have the vocabulary to even put it into words. It's just crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy. So, I, hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard you pause. And so I thought you yeah, were. Yeah. But I just wanted to say, but you know, but I'm just glad that I, you know, I kept going back to my mom so I can get resolved in my spirit after hearing her story. We are good. You know, and then after we, we talked and we laughed and she's like, you know what? I want to write my story. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, OK, we can do that. <laughs> That's what's up. I'm feeling good. Listen, I will read that. I'm going to read yeah. all of it. So we've got we've got some more uh, visitors tonight. We've got Adam. Uh, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce Mia Fitness and Gaming, but Adam says hi. And Adam has a question, and I want to make sure that I address um, the question. And the question is: Does childhood abuse make them abusers? And let me say this before we respond. Um, I am not a licensed clinical counselor, social worker. I'm not a doctor, psychiatrist, psychologist. Um, so this platform is a place for us to share. We share our opinions mm -hmm. and our lived experiences. And so our opinions come from those lived experiences. Please do not take anything we say as the final say so and the law. Okay. Um, so Amen. with that being said, we're going to share with you our personal opinions about your question. Okay. One thing in the speak up sis space, I don't, I do not like leaving people with unanswered questions. If a person asks, they want to know, um, they want to know your perspective. And, and I, so we're going to give that to them. So would you like to start? Sure. Does childhood abuse make them abusers? Mm -hmm. uh, no, they do not, because I didn't go around abusing people, as Angel said earlier. You know, she was hurt. I was hurt. We did not want to hurt anyone else. So, no, uh, it does not. That's my answer. <laughs> OK, and I, I feel the same way. Um, I don't believe that every person who becomes an abuser was abused because I don't, I don't believe that to be true. I'm sure we can find people who are hurting children or, or sexually abusing children who weren't sexually abused mm -hmm. themselves. Um, now, do I believe there was some type of issue or trauma or something in that person's life? More than likely. I don't think there's anyone living who does, who hasn't had any type of trauma um, in their lives. However, how we choose to deal with it um, is different. You may have someone who's never been sexually abused, but maybe they had parents who neglected them. Maybe they had parents who treated sex like it was taboo and bad and you can't touch and you can't even think about it. So although a person may have never been physically sexually abused, maybe the thought of sex became twisted in their minds. Mm -hmm. And so as they began to explore with themselves, other people or whatever, it, you know, it turned into something warped and ugly. I'm sure there are sundry Mm -hmm. reasons why abusers become abusers but to say that childhood abuse makes them abuse an abuser mm -hmm. I, I i i wouldn't put um i wouldn't say 100 percent of the time yeah. i wouldn't say 100 percent of the time and and actually i would even venture out there to say that it's not the abuse itself even if someone who's abused begins to abuse, I wouldn't say, and this is my personal opinion, that it's the abuse itself. It's how the incident was processed 
and how it was handled and how it played out in their lives. Mm -hmm. um, that sort of leads them into this place where they're, where, where they're, you know, doing that. And then of course you just have some evil people. Yes. Now, let's yes. just own it. They're just yes. so wicked. They are just wicked people in this world who just, they find ways to hurt people, torture people and things of that nature. And I guess that takes us to Adam's next question, which is our most abusers, narcissists. So first, let me say, Adam, welcome into the Speak Up Sis space. I appreciate you for being here. And I really appreciate your questions. Uh, we love questions. We love um, active engagement in this space. So thank you. So our most abusers, narcissists miss ivy are you are you familiar with narcissism uh someone that's uh lifted up in pride <laughs> <laughs> um i would say no but most narcissists something happened in their childhood something happened and it was not dealt with so therefore now they're just lifted up in pride basically got you so here again um i'm not well versed in narcissism um from what i do understand about it 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 when we talk about true narcissism because we now we call everybody narcissists but i believe <laughs> all of us have some narcissistic tendencies but that doesn't necessarily make you a narcissist right but when we talk about true blue narcissism and you are diagnosed, this person is a diagnosed narcissist, right? Um, I think it's important for us to understand that that is also um, a mental health issue. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing about narcissism is um, I, don't, I don't think they can tell you specifically where that comes from. But like you said, I'm sure there was some event at some point somewhere that even the person isn't willing to put their finger on mm -hmm. <laughs> to yeah. deal with it. But one thing I do know is that um, narcissists abuse people, mm -hmm. but they're not all sexual abuse. Right, right. They're yeah. not. And many of them may not even be uh, abusers of children, but they abuse people right. uh, mentally, psychologically, emotionally right socially um narcissists almost by very definition <laughs> are gonna be abusers in some capacity right but are all childhood sexual abuse offenders or predators are they all narcissistic i i, I personally i would say no um but i'm sure that there are some Again, we are not counselors, doctors, researchers. So, um, but that that's our, those are our opinions and we're going, we, we stick and buy them. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but thank you for the questions. I appreciate you. Hi, Quincy. It's good to see you in the building. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Tonight we are talking to author Ivy Caldwell and we are discussing her book, Expose It. And tonight we are having a conversation about what that it in her book is referring to. And we're talking a bit about um, getting to the, the point of exposing what that looks like, what happens when you expose and how you get beyond that place. Because sometimes when we step out there and we tell it, it's not received the mm -hmm. way we want it to be received, the way we need it to be received. And yet the healing process still has to take place. Yes. So I'm grateful and I'm thankful that your mom, that you and your mom have gotten to a place where you're both in a healing process and, and you're both talking and, and being honest, transparent and vulnerable with one another. What do you hope to accomplish with this particular book and who's your target audience is, is it people who've been abused? Is it more for people who are abusing? And they, so do you, do, have you thought about that in terms of who your target audience is, your target reader? Yes, my target uh, audience is a very hard audience to get to because there's this fear 
associated with sharing what you have been through. They don't want to go back and revisit the trauma. They fear, you know, what will people say about me? Uh, what will people think about me? But you have to come to a point in your life where you could care less what anyone else has to say about you because they talked about Jesus. You want to get to a point to being healed. Hasn't that trauma caused you enough pain in your life? It's time for you to expose it so you can be healed. I've had the opportunity to share my book with women who have experienced uh, domestic abuse, uh, sexual abuse, and it has tremendously helped them. Um, I launched a course this year where I have just five steps to get you started on your emotional healing journey. Those five steps, can we find them in the book? No, ma'am. Oh, they came <laughs> after the book. After the book. <laughs> but we can get prepped on them. We can read the book. That ought to lead us to wanting to wanting to heal prayerfully. Yes, yes, hopefully. Yes. That's what's up. That's what's up. Listen, I'm grateful for your life, for your testimony, for the book. I'm I'm so happy for the reconciliation. Let me tell you, and, and Shantae, um, she, she, she posted a question and said, or, or comment, excuse me. She says, sometimes the moms are consumed with survival mode themselves. They are oblivious to other things going on around them and inadvertently affects those around you. So, and, and I, I'm glad she said that. And as I say, I bless God for the reconciliation and restoration of the relationship between you and your mom. Um, that is important. And I think that is important for a lot of survivors in their healing process. And I know for me, because my abuser was my mother's boyfriend. And so for years, I was angry and mad and all these things until like you, I got to, and, and I didn't hear my mother's story until later after mm -hmm. reconciliation took place, but God helped me to see my mother. And once I realized that she was a woman before she was my mother mm -hmm. and I realized I had to look at myself and think about the decisions that I had made as a woman mm -hmm. and as a mother. Yeah. And the decisions I made that could have that could have possibly hurt my kids. Yes. As a woman and as a mother, mm -hmm. it helped me to be able to empathize with my mother as a woman. I learned to see my mom as a woman, not just my mother. Yeah. And in doing that, I was able to sit in a place of forgiveness for her. So when I say I bless God that you exposing this, you getting to a place where you would talk about it and going back to her, yeah, right? To give her an opportunity now that you're an adult and she doesn't feel like she's got to be responsible for your life, right? You are, hel you've helped her mm -hmm. to begin her expose it healing yeah. journey as well. So I bless God for you, your mother, y'all's relationship, this book, all the people Thank who are going to read it <laughs> and be blessed by it. And those of you who uh, watch Speak Up Sis talk show, you all already know I am going to invite you right now, right now <laughs> to grab a copy of Ivy Caldwell's book, Expose It. it you can't miss it. It's a bright blue um, book, you want to show it to them? There you go. That is the book. It is on the bookshelf. Uh, I believe it's in the nonfiction um, yes. section of the bookshelf. Please support this independent self published author and purchase her book. If you don't feel like it's a topic for you, I know. Listen, the statistics say, and this is an older statistic, but about 80%, I'm sure it's higher than that, mm. but about 80% of all women will at some point in their lives experience some type of sexual traumatic um, event. Yeah. So if you don't need the book, I can yeah. almost guarantee you there is a person 
um, in your life, someone that you know who does need it. So grab the book and gift it. Yes. Um, if 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 you want to do that as well. And you can go to speakupsis.com slash bookshelf. And again, for those of you who are new to the platform, welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. And please know that when you go to the bookshelf and you grab a book, Angel, my platform, my uh, my employees, no one gets any monies from the sales of these books. The authors give us the, the direct links to where they would like to drive their traffic. And so Ms. Caldwell will receive all of the profits for, um, for the books, the book. So please don't think that if you go to Speak Up Sis bookshelf, that somehow she's not going to get all of the profits. She will. It, I don't get any of it. Okay. Um, it's just a way to help bring, uh, bring her book off the huge Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> out of the Amazon, right? And and bring it into a niche audience um, where you have more easily, um, it's easily accessible to you. All right. So before we leave tonight, first, let me say this has been an amazing conversation. I'm just watching you. You, you just have such a peaceful disposition um, and it's calming, which it is is kind of the antithesis of my. I, I got like this ah, type of energy, and you are just as calm and peaceful, and I love it. And I appreciate you for being in the space and bringing um, your testimony, your book, your your wisdom into the space. Would you like to leave the people with um, something good before we leave? Yes, expose your truth. So you can be healed. Mm. Don't worry about the naysayers. You go and do what you have to do for you. So you can be healed. Amen. Amen. And with that, everyone, I want to say thank you all for joining us tonight for Speak Up Sis talk show. Make sure you visit us online at speakupsis.com slash bookshelf. You can take a look at the different books. You can find Expose It there. You will also be able to find all of the interviews, the previous interviews, as well as this one, located on Speak Up Sis Bookshelf as well. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram at Speak Up Sis Bookshelf. We're on Facebook at Speak Up Sis Bookshelf. And please, if you are watching YouTube, click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. We're here every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please come back and join us next week. Thank you, Ivy. It Thank was you a for pleasure. Me. And I will see you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good, -bye. Good night, everyone.